ring to it. Yeah. I think we we've probably answered this one, but one one of the um the you know how you defrag, reduce yeah. stress, relax. Yeah. Is that do you, do you get that from being out in the in the outdoors too? I, I get that from being out in the outdoors. Um, I, 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 I'm quite a loner, actually. Um, you, in my job and the things that I do, people think I'm this extreme extrovert. I'm in the media, I'm doing interviews, I'm standing up in front of people giving speeches, I'm meeting politicians, I'm just, but actually that's not truly who I am, right? I'm good at it, but it isn't what fills me. So for example, I've never wanted a birthday party for me in my whole life. I just don't want to be uh, the center of attention. I do it because it works for our business. Um, and I understand I'm a good communicator, so therefore people want to communicate with you. Uh, but actually, it's not, my, it's not my happy place. So sitting and doing a jigsaw puzzle, for example, just on my own with no one else in the room, um, and being able to do that is, is another thing, uh, another way in which I de-stress. So it's kind of the opposite of going for a run in the bush, but it's... it's you know, you're, you're concentrating on something that isn't work, isn't yeah. having to talk to other people, because I have to do that all day, every day, that isn't listening at a, to other people talking at you. It is just complete mind peace. Um, yes. And that's, that's the other thing that I do. And it doesn't have to be for long. It just has to be for long enough that I'm filled again and I can get out there and do it all over again. Yeah. Yeah. I, I totally, totally get that. I, like, as you were saying that, I'm like, yep, I was just nodding and turning, going, that's me, that's me. I'm the same. And we did a, you know, I actually talked about this extrovert. It was one of the, one of the things I was going to get to in the pop quiz, but you've answered that one already. And we, you know, 90% of the people that work at Total Sport, and we're a team of 12 at the moment, are, are introverts. So we spend our days, you think about how the journey of an event day goes, spending your yeah. whole day talking to people, hugging yeah. people, high fiving, yeah. listening to stories, cheering yeah. people on. Nine, 90% of us get to the end of the day and we're good at it, but we just want to get the yeah. hell out of there. Yeah. There's only one person in the team who wants to carry on and party. The rest of us are like, <laughs> I'm done. I got to go so I can get up and go to work tomorrow and, you know, and, and be, be an okay person. But so actually, if you, if you didn't, what we've got is balance because we've got that full on, but then you also you also, because of your introvert nature, want to switch off um, yeah. and want to, so I think those people that are up all the time probably crash um, a lot more than people who just want to, can do it for so long and they just need to get out of it, right? But I, if you never had it, you would miss that, right? That, mm. that contact with people. So I think mm. we've got a good balance in that we can do both of those things. But the other thing I do is play golf too, like you said. And again, mm. it's because you're in a beautiful place. It's a challenge. It's a physical challenge. Um, and you don't have to talk to people. Yeah. <laughs> well, not for much. <laughs> Especially not in the next two weeks. If you're golfing, you're, you're, playing, by, you're playing by yourself. You've got, you've got no choice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've got a few, um, a few quick fire questions here. Um, I'm just conscious of, of time. And it, these fly by. I think we've probably been going about 25 minutes now. Yeah. So, um, yeah. Couple of couple of quick ones for you. So, favorite superhero? Well, I'd have to say Wonder Woman, uh, and the reason <laughs> I'd say that is she kicks ass, but also she's not that superciliously sort of, you know, blokey, funny. She's a little more serious, so I quite I quite like that because it's uh, she's kind but not stupid. If, if okay. you're not, not a, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so she cool. rocks. Perfect. Um, favorite book and why? Actually, the book I keep referring to when I talk to people about books they should read is Open by Andre Agassi. And I've read an awful lot of books, but that one has stuck with me. Um, you know, his journey, the rawness of the way it's written, it's not mm. written well, mm. it's, mm. but it's raw and it really gets into you. I've read lots of other people's biographies, but that one really, really stuck with me. So I think that there was quite a few things out of there that I really got um, yep. that are embedded in me now. Yeah, I'm with you there. I um I, I read it too with not a lot of expectation, and it no. well and truly over delivered. It was yeah. it was a phenomenal book. Um, hardest thing you've ever done? Um, actually helping my mum as she slowly mentally declined after she got diagnosed with cancer. So this very powerful Wonder Woman type woman, um, you know, had to struggle and bring five kids up with dad who had his problems, right? 
um, she was just amazing. She used to cut the lawns with a machete and paint the house and cook the best meals and cuddle us. And I don't know how she did that. But then uh, in her 80s, never been sick, got cancer and the treatment diminished her, her mental capacity really quickly. Um, and so actually the hardest thing was watching that. Um, and, and then being her only daughter, right? Um, having mm. to do all the intimate things that you need to do. The frustration, you know, when she couldn't help it, but some of the things she said and did were really rude to other people, for example. It wasn't normally her, but, it, you know, trying to manage that, tell them that that's not your mum. You know, please don't get offended at this lady. That's not her. It's not her fault. Because that was the worst thing for me, is that other people would judge her. They didn't know her, and I wanted so desperately for them to know her. So that was the hardest thing, but it taught me an awful lot about, I guess, frustrations, patience, uh, how to deal with that kind of sadness um, and how to get over that and just love her for who she was at that time. Um, and yeah, I guess it just taught you a lot about love, right? Mm. Yeah, wow. Almost teared up there. That's, that, <laughs> thank you for sharing that. I mean, I, um, I was fortunate enough too to spend about a year with my mum who, 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 I'm not sure if I, I probably have told you this, who died at 50, which is just wow. ridiculously young. Wow cancer as well which she'd, she'd, yeah. she'd initially got in her 30s and had gone into remission and yeah I'd come back from overseas or something and yeah ended up spending that last year with her yeah. living with her and yeah. being part of that last part of the journey and it was something I yeah the learnings and the I guess the the, the, the toughness and the joy and the satisfaction around that time will yeah. be with me for yeah. ever yeah. yeah yeah amazing yeah and have one mum yeah, I only have, exactly, yeah. I tell people this too, you know, when I hear people talking, you know, sometimes not nicely about their mum, and in a, in a nice way, I try, I, I say to them, yeah. Yeah. Only, you only yeah. get one. Yeah, Just, yeah. You know, hey, no you one's perfect. Hey. Back. Yeah, mm -hmm. whatever you do is never, not going to compare to what they did for you, right, as you yeah. are, so, yeah. Yeah. selfless job and becoming yeah. a parent too you know and, and yeah. you, you you see it from a whole different yeah. perspective too like yeah, yeah my we, we grew up with my mum only so I, I can't even comprehend what, what it would be like to be a, a, a poor single mum which is exactly yeah. no. what mine was yeah yeah nuts um favorite quote if you've got one yeah I don't know who whose quote it was but I heard it at a seminar maybe two years ago and it really stuck and that is there is no comfort in growth Ooh. Ooh, I like and it's that. true about every kind of growth, right? Mm. If you're learning, if you're building something, if you're risking something, there's just no comfort in doing in doing the things that really take you leap leap forwards. Yeah, it's true. Wow. Running races, yeah. There's just yeah. no comfort in growth. I love it. It speaks to everything, really. Yeah, it does. I've, yeah. I've not heard that. That's that's cool. That's one I'm gonna I'm gonna write that one down. Yeah. Um, and a word that sums you up. I'd like to say happy, actually, yeah. because I, I like I think I'm upbeat most of the time, um, and even when I think I'm being grumpy, I'm still trying to be funny. So, <laughs> I think, yeah. and I get that from my mum. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, I can I can see that. Um, I know our last um, chat a, a few weeks back, following that that chat that we had, and I sent you a text saying something like. Um, you know, I would, we're all in the trenches at the moment and you are without a doubt one of the, the sort of people that I would jump into the trenches with and be led by. Like you've got this really cool way about you. And, you know, I love the, the girl from Glenfield story because everyone relates to that. Yeah. Um, but it's really awesome. Um, we're going to almost, I'm going to give you the last, the last word, but I just wanted to thank you for your time today. I'm sure you've got a whole bunch of things you need to do um but uh, you know one of the things you've always been is available to me um i love your message on your phone which because that that completely to me sums up integrity you say hey i've missed your call leave a message i will call you back and you do i think a lot of people say that stuff and they don't um mm -hmm. so yeah i i just um yeah that's why i want to thank you for being you and for coming into our our lives and you know, for, for the way in which you see us and the contribution that we make to you and but also the contribution that you that you make to us. Um, it's a really awesome partnership and you know, long long may it continue. 
if you could just um, yeah let let us know your thinking around how you know how's the world going to look post COVID like what's what are we what are we staring at here? Yeah, well, I think people this generation of people that have lived through this not so much the kids but certainly um, people of adult age will never be as free of fear as we have been. Right, so we know now really bad things can happen really quickly because we're a generation that hasn't lived through um, world wars or mass famine, certainly not in our, our country. Um, so for the first time in my life, I, I, I felt a little bit like this with the first Gulf War. Chris was only a baby, our son, and you're watching all these planes go into bomb, American planes, and you don't know whether it's going to escalate into a world war. And I remember standing there holding on to this child, watching the television, just bawling my eyes out because I thought, what have I done to him? What have I brought him into, right? Mm -hmm. Turned out that it wasn't that. But, but that fear, that's how I feel, have felt through this. Um, and little less so now that we're kind of physically, um, in New Zealand at least, coming out of maybe the worst uh, part of the health part of the crisis. Um, but I, I just think we're always going to be worried about what's next and is there something coming this generation? Um, so that she'll be right thing in Kiwis, uh, I think will be gone to a degree forever because we won't pass it on to our kids and grandkids in the way that has been passed down to us. And, uh, but I also think that number eight why mentality will come into its own even more now because some businesses are gone. But what happens with small business owners and entrepreneurs is you have no choice but to go build another one, find another thing that you think, and it will be the backbone of New Zealand, smart people, using and brave people having a go at starting something else that fills a gap that didn't exist yesterday but is now an opportunity um but in a way big companies can't respond to right so i was interested in that labor ladies comments around small businesses they will save us the emergence of um, small businesses meeting needs and restarting the economy will save us i think so i think that new zealand small business sort of is, a, is an advantage. Um, and I think that number eight wire attitude will become even stronger, but the she'll be right and it will never happen to us and ACC will take care of us, probably won't, it will lessen significantly going forward. And I think probably they're all good things for us in the end um, mm. as a nation. Yeah. Might not feel like it right now. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's a positive spin on things. Hey, Naomi, thank you so much. Like it's been really, really awesome. I spent half of that chat with goosebumps which is going to be a good sign um i am so pleased for you that you get to go to riverhead i lived next to riverhead for it was our last day before we moved to topol and yeah i love that place yeah i'm going to be thinking about yeah. uh the trials that you might be on today so yeah. enjoy that with the dogs they're going to be Thank absolutely you. beside themselves and um we shall look forward to catching up and having a hug when we're allowed to sure will and a game of golf, and a game of golf. <laughs> all right all right aaron take care thank you Bye. Thank you.